Good afternoon. It's now 5.30. I'd like to call the uh, Calhoun County Council September 25th, 2023 meeting to order. Uh, Ms. Bennett, would you please give us an invocation? Father, we come to you today asking for your guidance, wisdom, and support as we begin this meeting. Amen. Amen. We have a motion for approval of the agenda. So moved. Second. second. Probably move and second. Any further discussion? All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, likewise. The ayes have it. Uh, John, do we have any public comments? Uh, yes, sir. Mr. John Hain. tracks of land adjacent to the solar tracks. While we strongly support individual property rights, the potential effects on adjacent landowners and neighbors must be considered. If the solar projects in the Fort Mott area come to fruition, my son and I would lose about 25% of the acres that we are currently farming. This will force us to make massive adjustments to all of the infrastructures that have been taken decades to put in place. However, this is not your problem, it's ours. This is one of the negative effects of replacing one form of green energy growing crops with another, glass panels. Our main concern would be in the omission of pollution liability coverage. At one of our previous council meetings, Richard Hall informed us that the county attorney has stated that there is no need for pollution liability insurance if there is no pollution. Using that logic, then there would be no reason for a homeowner to need fire insurance if there is no fire. I don't believe anyone in this room really knows if solar panels will or will not cause pollution. What will panel integrity look like after 5, 10, or 20 years of weathering in the hot South Carolina summers? Do the glass panels have any toxins embedded in them from the manufacturing process? Would shards of glass from a severe wind event strewn over adjacent cropland render that land useless for producing edible crops such as peanuts and vegetables? If the shards of glass do contain, type, contain toxins, then these toxins leak or leak into the soil. Would the general liability policy cover this loss, or would the insurance company cover only the physical glass cleanup and claim that the toxins that leached out of the glass is pollution and therefore not cover that cleanup? With both forms of insurance in place, this becomes a moot question. If the risk of potential pollution from solar panels to adjacent landowners is so small, and insurance companies base their premiums on the amount of risk involved, then the cost of the insurance should not be a great burden for the solar companies. In the past eight to 10 years, we have received countless numbers of solicitations to install solar projects on that land. I'd like to share one of these for you, with you, dated March 16, 2023. It reads, my name is Steve Hatzman. I'm a development manager at Hexon Energy, a private owned energy development company based in Charlottesville, Virginia. We are looking for a few select sites and have identified your property in Calvin County as a potential location for ground mounted solar, solar panels. Hexacon Energy is excited about developing solar projects in South Carolina, in part because we have been successful That's in developing tile, projects tile. with Dominion Energy. Mr. Uh, Haynes, I'm sorry, but your three minutes is up. Okay, thank you, sir. Ms. Julie Taylor. This is not regarding solar. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. That's fine. Come on up. Come on up and give us give us your name. And I'm Julie Taylor. I live in Sandy Run. I'm actually um, going to speak about Mr. Rabin. I think he is um, up for a seat on the planning commission. Um, I do not know Mr. Rabin, but I know people that do, and they seem to think he's a, a nice guy. Um, I believe he's the managing partner of Civil Engineering of Columbia, and his firm worked with O'Kane Construction and Chad Rast, which expressed interest in developing the roughly 130-acre tract in Sandy Run. Their attempt to rezone that property was voted down by County Council last year. That property is across the road from our home. I would like to think that Mr. Raven's motivations for getting on the Planning Commission are pure, 
But if this is someone's conniving backdoor to shoving a pud down our throats, he is simply a means to an end and is being used as a pawn. I am far from a conspiracy theorist, but this seems like inside trading, trading to me. We were all taught that if at first you do not succeed, try, try again. I do not like this saying, but there are two ways to skin a cat. Can't beat them, join them. I'm sorry, but this just doesn't pass the smell test, and quite frankly, I find it disingenuous. Mr. Rabin has already exhibited a philosophy that I think is inconsistent with what should be the long-term growth plans for our county. It just doesn't pass the smell test. It stinks. Thank you for your time. Thank you, ma'am. Ms. Wanda Puckett. Hello, my name is Wanda Puckett and I'm a 30 year resident of Calvin County. I'd like to thank the council for taking the time to hear my concerns tonight. And it's the same as Ms. Taylor's. I am concerned about the pending appointment of Josh Raven to the planning commission. Again, I do not personally know Mr. Raven. Um, so please, my word is not an attack on him personally. It's a concern for the county. I believe that it is a conflict of interest and it's highly unethical for someone that stands to do business in the county with a private developer for profit to sit on the planning commission. In the past, he has done that. He was a consulting engineer for the gateway development in Calhoun County. And one of the things that stands out to me at that time, he was adamant that the large neighborhood would reduce traffic in the area. Not sure how many people remember being at the planning commission meeting where he said that. And I think we all know that adding 300 plus homes in a small area would definitely not reduce traffic. That thing alone leads me to believe that preserving the rural character of our county would not be an, an interest that he has. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, John. Uh, we had a public hearing on uh, Ordinance 20. 23-17, third reading an ordinance adopting amendments to the Calhoun County Zoning Ordinance by removing residential solar uh, installations from Article 7, replacing Section 713 with update requirements and updating related tab tables for conditional use and special exceptions. We have a motion for approval of ordinance 2023-17. 20, Public hearing. Is a way out of here. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We need a public hearing. Anybody yeah. like to talk, speak on that, come forward. Okay, we out of the public hearing on ordinance 2023-17. 20, we have a motion for third reading on ordinance. Mr. Chairman, I move we adopt uh, ordinance 2023-17, third reading. Do I have a second? Second. Properly moving second that we adopt ordinance 2023-17. Any further discussion? Yeah, I'd like to say something. I want to make sure that on the ordinance and the insurance side of it, what Mr. John Hain is talking about, that our attorneys make sure that it, the writing is in the way it needs to be to be covered from disasters. Okay. Richard, do you you want to? Say I was giving some of the council. You want to come in on some on that? Because I think you talked with some of the folks. So the language that you got in the ordinance it was written by the county attorney. Okay, and you previously received a memo um, outlining why the, his firm proposed the ordinance. The, the language reads: the applicant must obtain liability insurance, including offsite property damage coverage for adjacent property or properties to cover legal, legal liability for damage or other adverse impacts to the adjacent property owners. Liability insurance coverage shall be issued by an insur insurance carrier licensed in the state of South Carolina and carrying an AM best rating of not less than an A. Um, I don't think we can adequately prepare for every eventuality of what may or may not happen. Um, the, the language in, and I am not an attorney and I am not an expert on that. Um, that's what we rely on them for, and that is the language that they have prepared and inserted into the ordinance for approval. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. 
Yeah. Thank you. Um, a second note on that, not just wind damage, but hail. Uh, that crossed my mind. Hail. Any, any kind of damage. Any kind of damage, because hail. I will say that this came from um, Mr. and Ms. Matt brought, brought this concept to us. Uh, the other solar ordinances that I kind of reviewed on this didn't include off-site liability insurance at all. Uh, so this is kind of above and beyond what the typical ordinance does. Okay. Thank you, Richard. Thank you. Any more discussion? Call for the vote. All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, likewise, the ayes have it. Ordinance 2023 17 is adopted. Uh, we have a motion for approval of the uh, September 11, 2023 uh, minutes. So moved. Second. Property moving second. Any further discussion? All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, aye. likewise, the ayes have it. Any committee reports? No committee reports. Under appointment, we have um, District 1, Josh Johnson for the Planning Commission. Yes, sir. He's I'd like to nominate Josh Johnson for the Planning Commission for District 1. He'll be replacing Mr. Bates Howe, who is retiring off the Planning Commission. We have a second. Right. Property moving second. Any further discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposes likewise, the ayes have it. Uh, District 2, Josh Rabin, Mr. Chairman, Planning I'm, Commission. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to nominate Josh Rabin for the Planning Commission for District 2. Do I have a second? Second. Property moving second that Josh Rabin be appointed to the Planning Commission from District 2. Any further discussion? Yes, sir. Um, I appreciate anyone's willingness to serve on any of these commissions, uh, but Mr. Rabin has done business here in the county and he can do business again in the future. And Sandy Run people will not forget the development at Sandy Run Crossing. He was a paid consultant on that project that represented a developer requesting council to change the ordinance for a profit. And it appears to be a huge conflict of interest and it would also appear unethical. So I'm hoping that you guys will vote no. I just want to say one thing on that. One particular incident doesn't disqualify somebody from serving on the planning commission. I mean, we have five different opinions there, just like we have five different opinions up there. And if we was going to just have one opinion, we just needed one representative. That's the thing I got to say. I mean, I don't even know the guy, do not know him, but one, harder times we have in getting people, decent people on these commissions and boards, well, we're not going to disagree. I'm not going to just reject them to reject them because somebody don't like them. Or one, well, I mean, he's my nominee, and he, I appreciate Richard's second um, but to be truthful with you, but there's nobody in a small Cadillac that's, that does not stand a chance of coming up against something where, they are, where there is a conflict of interest. The, the system calls for them to recuse themselves exactly. from, from such a position, yeah. from being in such a position. Not does, it does not disqualify them from serving on the commission. Exactly right. Any more comments? Any further discussion? All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposes likewise. No. Nope. No. Okay, aye. Aye. Ayes have it. Uh, no more appointments under, anybody have any more appointments? I'm sorry. Under appearances, Dr. Mulder. Didn't see you back there, Doc. Come on up. Thank you, sir. Thank you, counsel. Just want to take a couple of minutes of your time. Um, in a previous meeting in springtime, we were asked by our executive committee um, to make sure that the county councils understand our housing program. And so we wanted to be able to give you just a quick update, about five minutes. Um, Ms. Virginia Jackson is here. She is our housing coordinator. I'm going to hand it off to her. All right, Mr. Chairman, Council, thank you for, for the opportunity to be able to speak to you. And I do want to talk to you about the, uh, the home program, which is our HUD federally funded program. Uh, the history of the consortium is that it was established back in uh, 20, uh, 2011, and Orangeburg <coughs> County at the time is our lead entity. We do have six counties, which is the Aiken County, Allendale County, Bamberg County, Barnwell, Calhoun, and Orangeburg, and also gave you that list of our partners, our members, which are those 23 municipalities on your uh, PowerPoint that you have. We have a technical review committee who covers um, 
all our six counties here in Calhoun, we have Amanda uh, Severs. But on our home program is the investment partnership program. For Calhoun County, we have uh, already this year received several applications for our housing rehabilitation program. In that, HUD did fund us for the 2023 allocation of $1,187,579 for the 2023 allocation. We do have two projects that's lined up for housing rehabilitation for Calhoun County. We're hoping that we can keep the cost of those two housing rehabilitation under that 50,000. Uh, but one, for example, is that we have one home uh, with their husband and wife are in their 80s and the home that we are needing to rehab is a home that was built by her parents. So there's quite a bit of work that's needed to do, be done for that home. But our priority needs are for our home program is to improve the affordability of housing opportunities, to increase and improve the supply of rental housing, and also improve the capacity of our local housing providers. We also have our home art program, and in the home art is the American Rescue Plan. In that HUD did allocate for us $3,855,545. And in that right there, our qualified population is where we're looking at those who are sheltered, unsheltered, homeless population. So we have uh, also those who are currently housed, uh, or those who are at risk of being uh, homeless. So we have uh, a strategic plan that we are doing assessments to see what are some of the risks or the factors that are causing them to be homeless and so we can't prevent that homelessness for them. So we are meeting with some of our nonprofits in this area in our six, six counties and we are meeting with uh, some of our community actions with our CHODO. So we are doing our part with trying to make sure that we are covering that to make sure that we are supplying their needs. And with your PowerPoint, I did give you a proposed budget that we have for our home mark program. So I do uh, let you know that we are busy with our home and our home mark program trying to make sure that we are taking care of the housing needs for the residents in our consortium in Calhoun County. Like I said, we are on the move. We're trying to make things happen for those who are submitting applications who are needing those housing needs. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Jackson. Anybody have any questions? Huh? Ms. Jackson. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Dr. Thank you. Muller. No more appearances. Uh, we're down to resolution 1720-23. Addition to Joint County Industrial Park with Lexington County. John, yes, sir, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, this is a request from Lexington County to Calhoun County regarding Iron Sports Properties LLC and or Sornex Exercise Equipment Incorporated. Uh, a resolution to amend an agreement related to the Joint County Industrial Business Park of Lexington and Calhoun Counties so as to enlarge the park. Um, so this would be the 1%. Uh, that we will receive, and they will receive the 99. So. We have a motion for approval. So moved. Second. Probably moving second that we approve, uh, approve resolution 1720-23. All in favor, aye. 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 All opposed, likewise, the ayes have it. Uh, resolution 1820-23, a resolution setting the millage and approving the local option sales tax credit factor for the 2023 2024 physical year. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. I'm going to ask our finance director, James Oak, to come up and give that for us, please, sir. Good evening, Council. Good evening. This resolution uh, is to set the millage and the local option sales tax uh, credit factor for fiscal year 2023 to 2024. Uh, for the general fund, it will be 119.4, the capital improvement four, capital improvement fund will be three mills, county debt service will be 7.9 mills, and uh, that will be a total of 130.3 mills. For the Calhoun County School, school operating millage is 134.4 mills, school debt service will be 15 mills, tech and Gresset, five mills for a total of 154.4 mills. And for the Sandron Fire District, 4.2 mills. The Calhoun County Rural Fire District debt service will be two mills. So for the 
total countywide millage will be 284.7 mills. If you're in the Sandy Run Fire District area, that will add a 4.2 mills for the Sandy Run Fire District for a total of 288.9 mills. If you're in the Calhoun Rural Fire District, there will be an additional two mills to the 284.7 for a total of 286.7 mills. The local option sales tax credit factor for this period will be 0.001259. And that is it for the resolution. Any questions? Anyone have any questions for Johnny? Okay, thank you, sir. We have a motion for approval. So moved. Second. Probably moving to second that we approve resolution 18 2023. Any further discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, likewise, the ayes have it. Uh, resolution 19 2023, a resolution. Resolution authorizing and approving the partial assignment and assumption of a fee agreement between Calhoun County, South Carolina and RRIFISR Land LLC. Yes, sir, uh, Mr. Chairman. So uh, this is very similar to what we had asked you to do here about two months ago with the first speculative building that Bedrock Development built uh, once they built it they leased it and the lease or wanted to purchase and so they transferred that over into that into that name this that is in front of you tonight the 19-2023 is much of the same thing but it's for lot three uh, the next location that's actually been cleared now for they're building one spec building um, and they've got to be able to break out the property and transfer the ownership to be able to build a second. So it's a transfer of ownership of what they're asking for. Motion for approval. Resolution. So second. Properly moving second. Any further discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, likewise, the ayes have it. <coughs> we don't have anything under old business. Okay, under new business approval, grant award for Calhoun County Emergency Operations Center. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, uh, I'm pleased to announce um, that Calhoun County was awarded um, a grant by the South Carolina Law Enforcement Division, SLED. Uh, the total amount of the award is $1,668,263. Uh, we've got a local match of $556,087. Uh, for a total construction of $2,224,250. And that is to go toward building an emergency operations center and training facility. Okay, Calhoun County is one of the few counties in the, count in the state uh, that doesn't or hasn't built an EOC recently. We've still got the original EOC that's about the size of the conference room right behind you. Um, and it's troublesome uh, when we have issues and we need to get the agencies around the table uh, in one location, there's just no room. And so uh, I wanna thank Dave Janacki, our EMD director, uh, for pushing this. I wanna thank uh, Congressman Clyburn and Senator uh, Graham uh, for their uh, influence on this, but certainly it is good news um, like I said, it's a one point, almost $1.7 million grant with a $556 million match. Um, I'd like to ask uh, for approval to accept that and the match, uh, we're looking at the match, two different locations out of that 554,000. One would be the COVID funds for infrastructure uh, and then the other is looking at breaking it out over a period of time and budgeting for it, okay? Uh, but either way, I don't think we've got, I don't think we need to turn down a $1.7 million grant. Uh, and, and like I said, it's going to be an EOC operations center, but it's also going to be a training facility for our sheriff, our fire, and our EMS. Just 
Mr. Chairman, you ready for a motion? Ready for a motion, Mr. Yeah. Chairman, I move that we approve the, uh, the grant award uh, and the match for the Calhoun County Emergency Operations Center. May I have a second? Second. second. Uh, any further discussion on that? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposes likewise, the ayes have it. Okay. Okay, at uh, ordinance 2023-18, second reading, ordinance to amend the Calhoun County Code of Ordinance, mm -hmm. Chapter 2, Administration, Article 4, Boards and Commission Divisions, 6, Orangeburg Calhoun Regional Hospital. You want to talk a little bit about that? Yes, sir. Um, uh, as we stated before, this is on the first reading. Uh, this is a, a reorganization of the board. It's not, actually not going to be called the board, hospital board anymore. Uh, it's going to be the executive committee. And you have the packet with the uh, ordinance, the draft ordinance in the packet. Uh, in essence, uh, it's going to be reforming it more toward uh, the agency body heads. Uh, we will, Calhoun County will have three members on that board. Uh, certainly, we only have a 20% uh, ownership in the hospital, and so we don't have the 80% the, the uh, or the total votes there, but certainly I think it's a good ordinance. Um, Michael Montgomery, our county attorney, has been working with uh, with the attorney with Orangeburg County uh, as well to form this ordinance, and uh, I'd like to ask for your approval. I'll take a motion for approval on ordinance 2023-50. Uh, so Second. Property moving second. Any further discussion? All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, likewise, the ayes have it. Okay, John, we're down to you. Yes, sir. Just one thing. Um, I just want to thank everybody for the attended uh, the opening of the sports complex Friday. Certainly, it's, it was much bigger uh, than I thought. Uh, a much bigger crowd that showed up than I thought. So I want to thank everybody for that. We've already, through the weekend, I've looked at it. We've already had a number of folks using it. Uh, you complaining a few with better ideas than we had uh, but certainly we will have a phase two to this project and we will be asking for input from the citizens on what they'd like to see but thank you for uh council thank you for allowing us to do this project uh, but also thank you to the citizens for supporting it okay all right thank you you don't have anything else john no sir uh, we have two items for executive session, uh, a contract matter to landfill and a contract matter, matter with Lake Marin Regional Water Authority. Mr. Chairman, I move we go into executive session for a contract matter regarding the landfill and a contract matter regarding Lake Marion Regional Water Authority. We have a second. Second. Property moving second. Any further discussion? All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed likewise. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. I don't think we're going to bring anything out. I doubt it. Okay. You can hang around for a while. I don't think. Mm -hmm. Jack.